Good morning, YouTube. It's Jeff Hale. Welcome to my channel. Welcome, fishers, hunters. Today, we're going to go over how do you fillet a salmon. And um, I just wanted to touch on a couple key points before we get into this. So this video is just one way of how you would do it. And this is a video that's gonna be for beginners, for people who've never done it. And I was uh, talking to a guide last week and he was talking to his clients and we were talking about how, how do you fish a spoon for steelhead? And how do, you, how do you know this and how do you know that? And the guide made a really good point. And he said, it's experiential. You have to actually do it in order to know. And it's the same thing with filleting a salmon or any kind of a fish. You have to take that knife, get in there, and mess it up a couple times. It's okay, you're gonna butcher the first couple fish you fillet, and that's okay. The only way you're really gonna learn, no matter how many videos you watch or, or what we tell you, is to actually get a salmon, try to do it the best you can, and you'll start to get a feel. You will get the experience. You will know what the knife feels like as it goes tick, 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 and runs along the spine, cuts through the pin bones, you'll just get a feel for it. So this is a good starting place, but don't be afraid to take a fish. Maybe you don't take a spring Chinook if you've never done this and try to fillet it. Let, let somebody who's experienced do that because that's like gold. But if you catch a pink and you're gonna can it or you're gonna do something, that's a great fish to practice on. Okay, so um, again, I wanna say I'm not an expert at this. You know, like maybe I fillet 20, 30 salmon a year, and I've done it for the last 20 to 30 years. Maybe that's like 400 to 600 salmon. So I've done a lot, but not compared to people like guides or people who are fish processors or people who work in canneries. Like some of those people are doing 600 a week. Um, a lot of people do 600 in the summer. Um, um, when I go out to um, Nia Bay, and sometimes I'll have um, some of the folks working out there on the dock filleting my fish, it's unreal how fast and precise and beautiful the fillets come out. So there's people who are an expert at this. Um, the method I'm gonna show you though, requires that you come in behind the head, that you tilt the knife, you're gonna run it along the backbone and you're gonna hear it go kick, 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 and you're gonna be cutting off the pin bones. Anyway, um, watch the video, uh, pay close attention to when I talk about collars. Collars are a piece of meat that a lot of people neglect. Um, also, there's a lot of meat that can sometimes be come off the spine when you're done and you can cook that. And the bellies, the bellies of the salmon um, can be amazing to smoke as well as the collars. Um, and then you can also Google, how do I remove the pin bones after I cut a fillet? We're gonna talk about how to remove the belly bones, but there's lots of videos on how to remove pin bones and you can just do that simply with a pair of pliers. So I hope this is uh, helpful and useful for you. Hello students, today what we have here is a Chinook salmon and I'm going to be showing you how to fillet this salmon um, as soon as I get this freezer paper off of it. We will get into how to take fillets off of a Chinook salmon or any kind of a salmon and make sure we get the most amount of meat off of that fish. Stay tuned. Okay, this salmon here has been what they call gutted and gilled. If you look at the inside of it, there's no guts and there's no gills. And by taking the guts and the gills out, removing any blood, <clears throat> it helps it stay better. This was wrapped in saran wrapped. Uh, uh, well, first it was gutted and gilled, dried, completely dry, wrapped in saran wrap, then wrapped in freezer paper and frozen whole inside uh, the freezer. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to flip the fish this way so you can see. All right. Uh, this is an, uh, this has got an eight inch blade on it. It's a Dexter, a Dexter Russell knife. And this has got a five and a half inch blade. So you want a sharp blade. This is a relatively small Chinook, probably only eight pounds. Smaller fish are easier to fillet than larger fish. But notice how much width my knife has compared to this fish. You would not want a knife that was only, say, that wide. That would be very difficult to do what we're gonna do in just a minute. So a minute we're gonna cut right behind it and we're gonna make a cut all the way down through this material until I hit the backbone. Then I'm gonna take my knife and I'm gonna very carefully watch my fingers flip up this belly meat and I'm gonna start to come through. And what I'm doing is as I'm doing this, I'm keeping my knife blade not flat, but I'm keeping it on edge and I'm running it along the spine. If you do it like this and you keep it perfectly flat and you try to run it, you'll miss some meat. You have to tilt it down and let it glide along the backbone. So as I do that, I'm kind of doing a seesawing motion, making sure my knife clears. This fish is still a little bit frozen. That's okay. 
And then here you, sometimes here you'll get caught up. You'll see this little fin, your knife will want to slip in there and get caught up. Continue to do that pressure, work your knife down until you get all the way to the tail and pop up. When you flip it over, you have a fillet. All right, we'll talk about that fillet in a minute. And you can notice that this meat is still kind of frozen. That's okay. What we're gonna do is pop this fish over. And we're gonna do the same thing to the other side. I'm gonna make my, take my big knife, make a cut down here and along. All right now remember, there's no fish on this side. So I don't have anything to hold it up and keep it firm. So this is a little bit trickier. The second side is always a little trickier than the first. So I like to grab the head so that I can leverage it up and down. And I take my knife, boom, turn it until I feel that backbone. See the edge of my blade? It's angled down. It's not flat, it's angled down. And I'm gonna skate this right along the backbone all the way up until I get to the tail, pop that sucker up, bam, you got another filet. Now most people would look at this and say, oh, I'm all done. When actually, there's still some meat on here. Some people will cut it right here and here, and they'll make a soup, or they will just throw this in the, um, in the oven, and they will take all this little tiny meat that's just left, and they'll pick it off and eat it, or they'll make a soup. The other thing is, this piece of meat right here up by the head. Can you see this? Okay, these are called the collars, and these collars are excellent. You can just, uh, you can throw them on a barbecue, you can grill them, or you can smoke them. They make great smoke fish. So you don't want to leave these pieces. Watch your hands, because you're never supposed to cut towards your hands. So careful. Come in here. Cut down. And now I have a collar that I can cook. Let's do it to the other side because we want to make sure we get as much meat off this thing as possible. Carefully. I left some meat there. That's okay. We'll just throw that on there and cook it. In addition, there's meat on these cheeks and this head that some people like to eat. All right. So we've taken care of the collars and that. Let's take a look at this filet though. If you notice, this filet has got belly bones in it. All right, nobody likes to eat fish with belly bones in it. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my smaller knife, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in here and I'm just gonna shave, I don't know if you can see, I'm just gonna shave like this and get underneath these belly bones. And I, once I get under, I just let the knife work. And what I wanna do is I wanna just skim these bones off so that when we're eating this as a family or your friends or whatever, they don't have to contend with these bones. So you're not gonna come all the way down. You're gonna come down to about right here on the belly line. And then you can take your knife and you can poke it through and you can just cut those bones off like this. There you go. Now you have a filet. If you want, you can go like this and you can cut that belly meat off and that also smokes really well, or you can grill it, or you can just cut this into chunks like this, barbecue it as it is. If you wanna take the skin off, you can take this, start here and move your knife along the skin side and you can take all the skin off of this and cook it. But now we have a filet here, two collars. Here's another filet, I still gotta deal with these belly bones. You can cook the meat off of the backbone, and some people can even cook that head and eat the cheek meat. All right, well, I hope that helped you. Um, tune into my channel if you uh, like my content, and please subscribe.